back for your fix, are you? It's been a while since the Fast Talking Jay has fast talked his way about the meta, and what better way to get started than the state of the game right now as we exit April and start going into the more frequently used uh, full modern age. Uh, because a lot of what happens in the competitive metagame does revolve around the rock and what they're doing. It's best to see how the limited format, which is where a lot of the figures have seen their action, is going to translate into the full modern, especially with things like nationals, worlds, and uh, whatnot around the corner. So without further ado, let's get started on the state of the game. Now, I don't know if I called it directly when it occurred, uh, but there is a dude that came out in Joker's Wild that a lot of people are talking about for a lot of good reasons, and that's Jakeem Thunder. Uh, Jakeem Thunder's ability to choose two powers in a single turn, one defense, one other one, uh, or just two powers in general is really, really potent. Add in the fact that if you throw on or uh, equip him with a character such as Eclipso or Brainiac, you can actually take away that weight on needing a defense power and go extra on the D on the offense with him. So, you know, he's, he's a character that's very versatile already. And when you add in the full modern age game, that's even more versatility coming out of him. So if you're going to be playing him, know uh, that you're taking a very strong figure uh, to the game. Uh, he doesn't, he's not a necessarily an auto win. You still got to make a lot of good choices, but that's why a lot of high-level players are going to be playing him because they know the choices they have to make and how to react when the game isn't necessarily the way they want it. So, uh, Jakeem Thunder is a figure to watch. Now, in cases of beating him, it does depend a lot on reading your opponent's choices of defense powers. If they're choosing Invincible, pay attention to the damage that you are throwing at him. Don't over-perplex damage. Don't over extend the damage you always want to go plus twos to increase by one when they're choosing invincible and this is just a general rule uh or you also want to uh just make sure you're getting through whatever defense power that they had to choose if he happens to choose super senses one day try to make sure you're going after that super uh, that, that uh precision strike find your ways around whatever defense power that they choose with him uh because that's going to be the best way to get around him now that's not necessarily a guarantee because a lot of time he's played with the felix spouse Felix Faust, his ability to shut down with the seven range, who I didn't bring downstairs. I probably should have brought him downstairs, but I just don't like touching him. <laughs> um, combined with Jakeem Thunder is just a pure nonsense uh, attempt uh, uh, to play against. It's really hard. It's not an easy game to, to have to go forward with. And you, you kind of have to watch your ranges, be aware of what's going on, and capitalize when Felix Faust rolls bad. Uh, he does have about half of his rolls being able to really affect the game as a whole, and like almost none of them are completely useless with a good player behind them. So, Jakeem and Faust being played together is already really tough to play against, and I can't give direct advice on how to beat that. That's Honestly, it doesn't exist. Uh, best, best chance is to take advantage of a bad Faust roll, and go in with as much as you can and possibly kill the Faust and try to keep away from Jakeem Thunder. That's going to be a more difficult role to have to play. Uh, but there's ways to do that. Um, so uh, good luck when either attempting to build against it. Also be aware that it is a strategy frequently used. Um, I don't do, say don't use those things because they're winning pieces. And that's how the metagame is played is people are going to use what's winning. Uh, just be aware, be ready for it. Um, if you're playing it, be ready for the mirror match. Uh, the mirror match being when you play against the same thing. You're basically looking at mirrors. It's a terminology not everybody knows. So, uh, Jakeem Thunder, feel like fast. It's tough. Good luck against it. Um, one thing that did appear in the limited format that could appear outside of the limited format or even in the future once rotation hits is... Alan Scott, the, the Green Lantern, uh, the 35.1 from Joker's Wild as well. Uh, but it's not just one. It's more than one. It could... I, I There's been reports of as many as six showing up on a board. Whew. Wow. <laughs> and it's been used in some cases in conjunction with 
the Doctor Strange con exclusive, uh, along with the Felix Fest con exclusive, just biding their time until the D20 roll goes their way is really difficult to deal with. And it's actually starting to look like a time where characters that can move through blocking or shoot through blocking are going to be pretty key. Now, I don't think there's anything in the current modern age or in, even in the future modern age that's going to be occurring post-June um, where we can definitely say there's a thing that shoots through all blocking. Uh, there's a few that ignore outdoor blocking. Keep your eyes open for them because those might be your keys to win map roll, get over that outdoor, that barrier that's going to be outdoor blocking now. Uh, but of course, feel free to charge through it with something like the Juggernaut or a Superman, uh, specifically the Shifting Focus, figure number 17. I remember this because I know the Shifting Focus very well. I've used them a lot. The Shifting Focus Superman uh, Super Strength version or the Wall Piece Superman, as he's often called, can charge through that, that barrier and in some cases take that barrier that they placed and possibly turn it into a weapon in his hands. Uh, never forget that the damage that he deals with an object when using super strength is increased by one. That's the damage dealt is increased by one. So if he's carrying a heavy object, because he's only 90 points, you can't get an ultra heavy, uh, he will be dealing an additional three damage. It's three initial plus two for the heavy, and then once the damage is being dealt, an additional one. Now, somehow you can perplex the damage up one and then do that damage. Yeah, you can get up to seven damage on that guy. That's pretty nuts. So... Uh, if you if you're expecting to see a lot of that Green Lantern wall in till something happens, uh, maybe it's a good idea to start considering the shifting focus Superman as an option. Uh, still dominating the game, Krang, uh, but his future is tentative. Um, for one, two figures that have been used with Krang that are making him really good right now are the Batmite and Justin Seyfert, but. In that case as well, and Krang is, of course, the super rare from uh, TMNT 1. Uh, i got to be specific because there's other Krangs, of course. Um, but one of the things to note about this is Justin Seyfert and Batmite are key pivotal points to making him work as well as he does. With that said, in an environment where those things stop existing, which is the next modern age, uh, and the next modern age being in June... He loses a little bit of his effectiveness. He doesn't have the ability to go across the board, do a ton of damage, and then walk, get shot back. So, you know, you're going to see that uh, possibly disappear. Unless some kind of, some form of other slingshot does occur. Don't forget, he doesn't start as a giant. So if you time your turn in the pre-New Rules era, uh, a, a, a Jean Grey from the Fast Force, the X-Men Fast Forces, can toss him forward. Then he can use his bonuses to do some damage and get himself forward. Uh, if you can find a way to get him a little bit further back, which is a little hard, easier said than done, or you might just be able to shoot at a decent enough range. What I'm saying is keep him within a... Well, no, because then by the time you get him to plus two... So, yeah, he'll be shot out. He'll be doing a ton of damage at first, but it's a matter of whether or not he can stick around and survive. Uh, and in that case, just penetrating damage in any sense. We'll get through him because he has to take two damage after the fact. And even though he has plus two to his stats, uh, there's a lot of non, like there's a lot of high attack characters that can penetrate. And really he might just be a, uh, a sitting duck. So Canadian nationals level or pre pre June nationals tournaments are going to see crane. But after that, we might see him face out again. Uh, strategies involving the bizarro, the bizarro green arrow do exist. Do not fool yourself. It exists. And it's it's good to know how to work around him. Uh, one of the most ideal is, of course, basing. <laughs> Getting in close and making close combat attacks. He can't do anything about that. So uh, we're starting to see some teams are actually able to functionally use close combat again. And that's kind of an exciting time, to say the least. Um, so uh, be aware of that. Uh, Renatilly has become an engine for something. Uh, that I'm going to talk to talk about next. Uh, but in a world where you can, if you can get an enabler uh, or an ability that needs enabling, Renit Tilly will get them there. Uh, she's been used with Doc Ock strategies. She's been used with uh, Shredder strategies, which we're going to be talking about next, to get them there. And then she adds probability control and some minor attack abilities as well to the table to add to to add to her functionality. In addition to which, she uses carry and phasing. Uh, and sidestep all in the same power. Ultimately, she's a really great enabler um, that can 
really, really functionally help a lot of these teams. Now, without further ado, the Shredder strategy. Uh, what does Shredder do? Well, Shredder moves next to you and deals one penetrating damage. And now any of these Shredders will be the Shredder clone, is the most frequently used, that brings in the sidelined uh, Shark Shredder. It's most, the most likely sense you're gonna see them. Uh, pay the extra 10 points on this. You have an 85 point character with a reasonable dial who's hard to kill, brings out this one, who, and all these Shredders have the ability to move to a character that they didn't start base to, and then didn't start the move base to, and then deal one penetrating damage. Now this could be used multiple times in a turn with a little bit of strategic placing, a little bit of strategic carrying, and so on and so forth. And then once you like include it in all that is some really competent close combat fighters. Uh, the Shredder clone himself starts with a really good 12 attack. And plus he's also got the ability to pick a character on your opponent's team. And anybody who isn't that character on your opponent's team gets minus two to their attack when attacking his already impressive 18 defense with energy shield. So if they're trying to get the range advantage, he does have the defense to kind of get there. So, um, you know, he, he he's the most popular one, cited by other ones such as the Mini Shredder, the Shiva Shredder, or the Claw Shredder, or other options that have been used in some cases, uh, mostly in higher points. The Mini Shredder is most likely to be uh, used because you get some extra reach out of that Shredder ability if you do something like carry with the Renatilli, then, or carry with something like a Renatilli, could also be a Vanisher, then have the Shredder clone say, carry the Mini Shredder on a sidestep, and then if you're still not close enough yet, you put the Mini Shredder forward, he sidesteps further and does his free penetrating damage. It's, so you get a little bit of extra reach out of the Mini Shredder if you think that's something you're gonna be needing. Um, there is some other uh, things that I have noticed in, in the game as well. Uh, some people have been including the ha 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 Joker on their teams, <laughs> excuse me, just as a throw in because he's hard to kill. Even at a 30 point dial, you have to deal like 18 damage to him to guarantee it unless your opponent gets some pretty shoddy rolls on his heal rolls or his take damage rolls. It's it's a catch, it's a catch 50, a catch 22. I don't know. It's not a catch anything actually when it comes down to it. It's just a thing that he does. Um, so now this is just kind of the state of the game right now in the limited format going into uh, full modern. We see a lot of these still being able to carry through. The Green Lanterns, for sure, the barrier is going to be a very staple uh, strategy. Possibly can um, brought in with these other strategies in order to just make them more well protected. Is it a turtle season? Maybe. Is it time to start turtle hunting? Possibly. Uh, and by turtle hunting, I mean crashing through and breaking a team that's stuck, clumped together and, you know, waiting on a thing to happen. So, Alice Scott's a thing. Perhaps it's time to consider the Superman or other such wall-breaking figures as a thing. Now, of course, this is being recorded prior to the release of Mar uh, Avengers Defenders War, which we'll discuss uh, with our unboxing video and our figure-by-figure, piece-by-piece uh, -piece review, so you guys understand which of these figures will be able to help in this environment uh, in all these cases. So, with that said, the the game right now does have some really tough strategies to get through. Uh, Jakeem's solo tactics are really hard. Doctor Strange, Faust tactics are going to be really difficult to get to. And it's a question of whether or not it's worth teching against, teching through, or teching around. Um, with that said, thank you guys for watching. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the next Metafix as I'm going to continue to record these on a more regular basis. Always remember that practice makes your team better too. Ha, ha, ha.